Well, here we are again, men. I love this day. I, I always look forward to this day because I love the presence of the Lord. I love the call upon his name. And I know that praying is not a waste of time. Before we go into this season of prayer, I pulled a book off my shelf, a book that I had uh, read years back. I think I gave it to some of you. It's called Fresh Power by uh, Pastor Jim Cimbala. He also wrote the, another book, Fresh Fire. But in this one, he talks about prayer. And I want to read you all a little piece of what he says. It, uh, he says, it saddens my heart when I contrast these New Testament models of Holy Spirit power with today's popular user-friendly approaches. Unbelievers can regularly attend meetings and leave with no conviction whatsoever because neither the Spirit nor the Word has preeminence. Many feel the message must be diluted because they don't want to scare off the visitors. They don't believe the Bible record that, that plain spoken truth anointed by the Holy Spirit through a loving vessel will bring men and women to Christ. Instead of concentrating on divine power, they're busy relating, quote unquote. They strive to meet people, quote unquote, where they are and tell them that they want, tell them what they want to hear. If it's entertainment they want, the church will provide it. Pastors certainly won't step on any toes or make anyone uncomfortable. Please show me one place where this approach was used in the book of Acts, which is the golden age of the church, was the golden age of the church. Such a mentality is tragic. Even worse is that young ministers attend conferences where they learn to implement a philosophy of ministry unknown to the New Testament. A friend of mine in the Christian music field told me he had recently received a call from a distraught minister of music in the Midwest who had just been roundly scolded by her newly arrived senior pastor. What offense had this woman committed? Nothing more than to have her choir sing the Brooklyn Tabernacle Singers communion medley, which starts off with, Oh, the blood of Jesus, then continues to wash me in the fountain, and then the old hymn, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. Said the senior pastor to the woman, his voice rising, you will never ever sing about the blood of Jesus in this church again. If you do, you will lose your job. We've outgrown the stage of using crude religious symbols from another era. Pastor Symbola says this, what a horrible grieving of the Spirit of God. And then he says, we need more power and less show. More power, more power and less show. Isn't it so true that we live in a time where we need more power? And that's why we come today. We come to seek his face because we need the Holy Spirit today like we've never needed him before. You know what I love? I love that the reality for us today is that if, if we want help, it's available. He will help us if we will just but call upon that name. If we will begin to call upon the Holy Spirit of God, God will help us. And so as we go to prayer, let's go confidently with our prayer. The Bible says to come boldly before the throne of grace. You know what I love about my God? My God looks at me, and even though he's the great awesome God, he says, don't come to me like a dog with your tail between your legs, like somebody apologizing. Yes, we come with respect, but come boldly. Come believing that when we open up our mouths, he doesn't just hear, he responds. And so as we begin this prayer time, Pastor Lopez, you're going to, to begin that we pray for God's will in the presidential election. We're not praying for our choice. We're praying for God's choice. And I just want you to know, I've settled in my spirit that it doesn't matter who God puts in there. Even though I may have my own convictions, whatever God does, as long as we've got his will, everything's going to be all right. And so I've asked you to just share a little word of encouragement toward the people before we go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. I usually write my thoughts, so let me read my thoughts. That's fine. <laughs> the presidential election is in full swing, and Tuesday is voting day. And 
does God care about everything that affects our life? The answer is yes. And with that said, God cares about our government and he cares about our government leaders. Our system may not be perfect, but it's far better than many of other nations. And this is why the word says that we pray for all those in authority. Now, what I'm about to say is not a political endorsement. But it's not just about the character, it's also about policy. That's right. And we're called to stand on the side of kingdom righteousness. And for God's people, it's not about parties. Because no one person in office has the answer to fix all the wrongs. We serve a sovereign God who sits on his throne. And God says we can make a clarion call. We as God's people, he said, we can make a clarion call into the heavens. He said, if, if my people who are called by my name, if they humble themselves and they pray and they seek my face and they turn from their wicked ways, he says, I will hear from heaven, forgive the sin and heal the land. We need to pray that our nation will turn to God as opposed to pushing God out of our lives and out of this nation. Psalm 22, it still says, for the kingdom is the Lord's and he rules over the nations. Thank you. Psalm 33 still says, bless is the nation whose God is Lord. No matter who enters this presidential office, God is still sovereign. Yes, he is. Let's pray. Yes. Father, yes. we give you yes. praise, glory, and honor. Yes, we and Father God, we've learned that you know the beginning to the end and the end to the beginning. Yes. And nothing surprises you, God, My God, because everything is under your sovereign rule. Yes. And so, Father God, as your people, as your sons, Father, we lift up this nation right now. And Father God, we know that this nation is in your hand. Father, this nation started with, the, with these words, in God we trust. And so, Father, we bring those words back up and we say, God, in you we trust. Yes. Father, I pray that you forgive us, Father God, for our wicked ways. I pray that you forgive us, dear God, that as a nation we've turned from you. But, Father God, this is your nation and you created this nation for a reason. And, Father God, we used to be the nation that was the light and the voice, your voice and your light among the world. And so, Father God, I believe in the name of Jesus that your spirit will rest upon all people. Father God, as it says in Job, Father, that you will come upon all people. And so, Father God, I lift up this presidential election. I know, dear God, that whoever enters that office, Father God, they're under your sovereign rule. Because you can use, Father God, whoever it may be. But Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray over this nation. I pray over your people. And Father God, Lord, I, I bind a spirit of fear. Yes. But Father God, I pray, dear God, give us wisdom. Father, help us to be sensible. Help us, Father God, to, to, to be uh, 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 to understand and be sensible to the guidance of your spirit. Father, that if we pray and we say, God, who would you have me to vote for? Father, that we are sensible to your answer. Because, Father God, the balances are in your hand. So I pray, dear God, in the name of Jesus over this nation. I pray over that presidential office. And whoever it may be, dear God, I'm praying that this nation, and it starts with our leaders in authority, that we may look up to you. Knowing, dear God, that you are the only one that has the answer, because only you can save the soul of a man. So, Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. And we pray these things, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This thing of policies is very important because what we need to understand is that too many times we narrow our mindset and Christians have got to quit narrowing our mindset because one policy we don't like or this one we do like. This is why we need the mind of Christ because we don't know what we're doing 
if we don't have the mind of Christ. We think we do, but we don't know. So, Father, help us. Dr. Hill, you're going to pray for a cure for this COVID-19. You know, this is still my heart. God, give them the answer, but give it in such a way that those that are looking through with the biological, scientific eye, they look and say, man, I see God in this. I see God doing something in this. And that their eyes, some people through science and research have found God. And God has found them. So lead us in that way, Dr. Hill. Just, just pray as God leads you. Father, we give you glory and God, we give you praise. Yes. There's none like you, dear God. Father, we come today in the name of Jesus. And God, we're, we're praying for a vaccine for this COVID-19. Yes. God, if I can move from the physical to the spiritual, God. God, I already see a vaccine in heaven, Lord. But I'm praying, God, that that we may do what we need to do that you might release it into the earth, oh God. I pray, oh God, that we would look into your word and not just for instruction, but for transformation. Change a nation, oh God. God, I pray that you would move into the hearts of people. Move into the hearts of the church that is drifted. Oh God. Yes. Move into the hearts of the world that has disregarded you. My God. God, let us get it. We need you. We need to do it your way, God. Yes. We need to cling to your word. We need to accept your son Jesus as Savior. We need to let him be the model and the guide in our lives. God, we need to learn to surrender to the Holy Spirit. That you might guide us, God. So, Father, we're, we're talking about a vaccine. We're waiting for a vaccine. We're hoping and, and we're praying for a vaccine. God, help us to do what we need to do that you might unleash it in the earth. I know that you're able, God. Help us to hear from you, God. Help us to see what we need to be and, and do what we need to do. God, I believe there's purpose even in this pain. Let us find it. Let us be better by it. Let us be, let us be models of what you're calling for in the earth. We thank you, God. We still praise you. In Jesus' name. Glory. Pastor Stefan, in a moment, you're going to pray about peace in the hearts of God's people. Um, you're going to give us a, a word of encouragement. I want to say something that I find that I want you to add into the prayer aspect. First of all, we want prayer in the, for peace in the hearts of God's people. There was a study I was just recently reading, and it says that depression, uh, all those things that go with it are on the rise in people's lives, but yet they don't seek help. It says the majority do not seek help. And so we're going to pray for that. And, and Christians, man, if anybody ought to have an unexplainable, explic unexplicable peace, it ought to be us. But we know many of us don't, and probably most of us don't. The other part, though, that's, as, as I was listening to the Spirit, even as Dr. Hill was praying, Add to your prayer that we need peace in the earth. 
let me say something that I don't think I'm talking out of turn with the Holy Spirit. But I felt like the Holy Spirit said that after this election, we need peace in the earth. Okay? So if you lead us, do that, all right? Amen. Read in the book of Matthew earlier, and um, there's a story about the disciples all gathered with Jesus, and Jesus says, we're going to go to the other side. Let us go to the other side. Yes. So the disciples get on the boat. And as they're going across, the waves and the winds begin to get all crazy. And, and the disciples are like, oh, my goodness, we're not going to make it. What's going on? And Jesus shows up because that's what Jesus does. And he rebukes them. He says, you guys have no faith. Where's your faith? And what I, what I believe happened is that the disciples forgot that Jesus said we were going to make it to the other side. Jesus spoke a word and said, let us go to the other side. And if Jesus spoke yes. it, it must come to pass and I believe we as believers can take something from that you know in this time of COVID and time where things are going crazy we have election and sickness and all these different things going on it's easy to easy for us to think we're not going to make it to the other side That's right. but Jesus spoke a word yeah. on New Year's Eve he said that we as a church are going to have one vision one voice and one victory and we may be here right now things don't look like it but Jesus said that we will make it to yes. the other side. So let's pray. Father, I thank you. Lord, that when you speak a word, it must come to pass. Yes, Lord. I thank you that you are the Lord of peace. You are, you are Prince of Peace. God, no matter what occurs on earth, no matter who is in office, no matter what's going on in the streets, Lord, no matter what is going on, you are still seated and you are the Prince of Peace. Thank you. So God, I pray even now that you would usher in your peace to your people. You would usher in your peace and your peace would cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. God, I lift up every single person, Lord, whether they be a part of this house or not, God, that is, is, is battling depression, anxiety, and all those things that go with it. Lord, I pray, God, that you would meet them where they're at and, Lord, they would look to you. And God, as they look to you, God, that you would begin, begin to impart peace. You begin to impart joy you begin to impart things of the spirit because father we know where your spirit is where your holy spirit dwells lord nothing else could dwell there so spirit of god we give you permission lord to invade every area of our lives god i pray even on, on, on the practical level lord that you would prompt people to go and get help prompt people to reach out to pastors and leaders and god that they would understand lord that they're not in this by themselves and god that when people People are, 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 are away from people that it's the enemy's trick to keep people isolated. God, I break isolation right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as you know, Lord, there's a lot of political tension. God, I pray whoever is elected into office, God, that there will be peace on the streets. God, whether, whether people don't like, if they don't like that person, God, I pray that you would uh, do something in their souls, do something in their spirit. Lord, that they would have peace, that you're in control. And God, whoever ends up office is who you chose God we don't elect them God you put them in office so God I pray that you would have your way and God I pray for that person right now Lord on this live stream whose marriage doesn't look good Lord whose finances don't look good whose relationship with their children doesn't look good I pray for that person and God that they would know that we will make it to the other side spirit of God have your way in Jesus name amen yes Lord yes You know, as, as you were praying, Pastor Stefan, it hit me where Jesus said, when he said, I'm going to give you the helper, there was something that he said that I think sometimes we forget. First of all, Jesus said, there's a lot more I want to tell you, but you can't handle it right now. But then he said something that, blew, that blows me away. He said, and when he comes, he will give you recall. He's going to bring back to your memory everything I said to you. And as you were praying, don't you know that God took us back through your prayer to New Year's Eve night, recalling that he made us the promise. We're going to make it to the other side. If we will stay connected to him and trust, if Jesus said it, he'll do it. Jesus doesn't, sometimes we preachers, we can waste some words when we're preaching. We try not to. 
And for the most part, I don't think most of us waste, but sometimes let's just get real. We get out of the spirit and get in the flesh once in a while. I always know because my wife and my daughters give me that sweet loving, don't go there, don't go there. But Jesus never wastes a word. If he said it, he will do it. Amen? Amen. Pastor Mitchell, missionaries, I know that this thing has been tough on missionaries. Some of them are still traveling. And, you know, we just, I could never, I've always said this. There's two things I'm <laughs> thanking God he didn't call me to be. <laughs> An evangelist and a traveling missionary. <laughs> I don't think we understand the gravity and the weight that those folks carry. And, and it's not that doesn't mean that our jobs are any easier, that our calling is any, but it's just, I'm not, I know I'm not made for that, but some are, and they need the covering and the prayer of the saints. Would you lead us in that, and just, just to believe God? Heavenly Father, God, <clears throat> Father, I just want to say thank you for your presence, God. Oof. Yes. And Father, thank you for those men those men that have answered, women and men, that have I answered know. your yes. call, God. Yes, Lord. Because, Father, it's not easy. Father God, we've done mission work. But, Father, there's men and women that this is what they do. Father, there's so much weight in it. Father, I just pray for your strength for them. I pray, God, that they would just trust in your peace. That, God, that they will move with you in everything yes. that they do. Because, God, there is so much, especially missionaries even here, God. Because there's missionaries here that, that get shunned and get pushed away. But, Father God, those missionaries that are in third world country that have to deal with so much, especially during COVID, with not having enough, with it was already bad and it's just gotten worse. So, Father, if they feel alone, if they feel, Father God, that they might not be where you called them, that they will go and just look for you. That they will trust in you. Father, I pray for comfort. Yes. Father, that they will lean on you. My God. Yes. And for them to have just people around them to just be able to continue this walk. But Father, the most important thing is that they will keep looking towards you. My Lord. Because I... Again, we're in a different position, Father, but I know what it feels like. Sometimes you yeah. feel like you're alone in this walk. That's right. That's right. So I could only be, imagine being somewhere where it's not even where you're from, or somewhere that it's not even an area that you know or understand, God, to truly feel that you're really, truly alone. But, Father God, you're always there. You're always ready to listen. You're always ready to guide. You're always ready with comfort and power to be able to move in an amazing way way, God. So I just pray for a covering over them. I just pray a covering over their family, over the ministry, God. And I pray that you would just continue to move with authority and that, just, that they will know that they're walking in victory. My in the God. name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My God. Mm, authority. Uh, God, help us all to know that authority. <laughs> what we've got. My Keep going back to it. We have this treasure in clay pots. The Holy Ghost of God. My Lord. Well, Dr. Hill, I know I don't need to tell you, but some people need some need a physical touch from God. And I, I think of those that we don't even know about. You know, I don't know. In, in the Midwest where I come from, People are not shy when they need prayer for physical healing. They let you know. You know, I, as, since I've been living in New England, I have come to know that there are some people who think that there's an extra fruit of the Spirit. It's called mind reading. <laughs> and they just don't tell you when they're sick. They Some, some of the people feel like they're a burden to us or whatever, and... and you know, it, it's not a burden just to, to send us a message or make a phone call and say, I'm going through this or whatever. I just said all that to say, we know they're out there. And so I, I, I want you to, before you pray for those that need that divine touch, 
Just give them a word of encouragement. You know that COVID-19 has stolen the spotlight. So much so that if we're not careful, we'll forget or fail to see that people are going through other things That's right. That's right. other than COVID-19. Yeah. This week I was reading the story of Johnny Erickson Tata. Bishop, you, you've talked about her. And it was in 1967 that she was in a diving accident and became a quadriplegic. And the story said that when she, um, when that first happened, she had such faith that she believed God was going to heal her and she was going to walk again. The story says that she would call her friends and say, God's going to heal me. Next time you see me, I'll be walking down your street been 53 years and she hasn't been healed or she hasn't walked again let me say that for you she hasn't walked again yet but let me tell you some things that have happened um, she's an international singer vocalist author radio show host she started a ministry um, Joni and Friends God has used her in a mighty way in the midst of her suffering. And I think the most important thing is that over those years, she's come to realize that there was purpose in her pain. Come on. And that took me to, to something that Pastor Lopez said when he was going through some struggles, some health challenges. He said that the Lord told him to embrace the pain Come on. and conquer the fear. So my word of encouragement to you is, is from Pastor Lopez. <laughs> Embrace the pain. Yes, sir. Conquer the fear. Yes. And here's my piece. Find the purpose that God has in your suffering. Yes, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, and we praise you. There's none like you, God. We know who you are, Lord. <laughs> you are the healer, Lord. There's nothing too hard for you. There's no disease or manner of illness that you cannot deliver us from. And God, you can do it right now if it's yes. your will. But I want to lift up those today that are suffering, oh God. Not just with COVID, but with other physical ailments, Lord. I lift them before you in the name of Jesus Christ. God, your word tells us that we should ask you for what we need. So God, we're asking for healing. But like Jesus said in the garden, not my will, let your will be done. So God, if you don't bring healing today, tomorrow, or next week, if you don't bring it for years, or God, even if you never bring it, let me find your purpose in the pain, oh God. I pray for everyone who's suffering right now, Lord, that they would see you, that they would know your presence, feel your love, oh God, that they would be filled, oh God, with your yes, spirit. Lord, that they would make it through these yes. difficult days, make it yes. through yes. difficult nights, embrace the pain, conquer the fear. Oh my God. And God, I pray that you would show them your, the destiny oh my God. that you have for them, God. Give them the strength to run it. My Lord. Even if you have to run it in a wheelchair or in a sick bed, run the race. Give them the strength to do that, God. Thank you, Father. We don't question you. You're always right, mm. even when it hurts. Yes. In Jesus' name, mm. amen. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, Dr. Hill, as you were praying about that, uh, Sunday, one of the last points I'm going to be sharing kind of ties in with what you prayed and what you spoke. And you know, the Apostle Paul said three times, I asked God, remove that thorn in the flesh and there's definitions of thorn and I'm coming to know that what may be a thorn to you may not be a thorn to me and vice versa and sometimes a thorn and, and the angle I'm going to come from Sunday is different than what I'm about to say now but that God said if I remove this thorn then we're going to miss the greater purpose 
And he says, so I'm going to let you keep it. But the greater purpose is the way I'm going to enable you to handle it is going to bring greater glory and honor to my name, says the Father. And we always think that healing is the only way God gets glorified. Thank God for healing and want to see him do it. But there are some that for whatever his sovereign will is, it's not to remove the thorn. It's to show you that my grace, my grace is sufficient for you. And what a testimony that is to my grace. Pastor Mitchell, oh, God knows we need a revival. <laughs> and what, what I love is God knows there's a, there's a few of us that want it. You know, I, I don't know about you all, but I can almost taste this thing. And, and, and I feel like we're inching up on something that's so thick, but yet it's so tangible you can cut it with a butter knife. And, and, and I know I'm not the only one that feels this. And I know we're not the only church that feels it or is pursuing it. And I just believe we can't miss because God's going to make it happen. Before you pray, Pastor Mitchell, just give, give the folks a word of encouragement because help is on the way. <laughs> Glory. So, as I was getting ready to speak, I had two thoughts. And just being here, I got confirmed which thought to go with, All right. what to speak. And where I want to go to is <laughs> Acts chapter 2. And the reason I want to go there is because they were waiting. Come on. Mm. They were waiting. Mm. They were waiting, not understanding what would happen next, but they were waiting. Bishop, there's a purpose why you're teaching and understanding the Holy Spirit deeper. There's a reason why this is happening now. And we've always been taught, but I'll be honest with you, I, as Bishop went to teach, I was like, yeah, yeah, I know the Holy Spirit, yeah, you know, who people are going to get this, but God had to check my heart. He said, no, 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 this is also for you. And until I did that, I said, oh, snap. I said, oh. Because the church, <laughs> when the Spirit hit, it took them somewhere that they did not expect to go. And Bishop, you've been talking about it. The Spirit, you need the Spirit to take you to another dimension. To go where we need to go. To another level, you need the Holy Spirit. But you see, we think that revival is just for the people out there. But no, no, no. Revival started with the church. Revival started here. Revival started with 120 people so that they could grow and impact everybody else. So if I could give you a word of encouragement is, listen, open up your heart and get ready and to understand the Spirit deeper because God is doing something something this is heavy they just get ready and just know that it's not coming how you expect it to come it's coming how he wants it to that's come it. that's it that's it mm. Lord. heavenly father man my Lord. God, first I want to say thank you. Thank you for confirming what you wanted me to say because all day today I'm like, I have two things that I want to speak on, but God, you said no, no, no. You use Bishop. Everybody here to confirm this is where I want you to go. Holy Spirit, thank you. Because, Father, I believe as a church, and, and I'm not talking about here, I'm just talking about the church as one. It, it has, Holy Spirit, they pushed you to the side. Not understanding that Jesus said, I'm going to send a helper. A helper that we need to understand, to help us understand, to help bring things when we need them, to give us wisdom, to give us strength. Father God, we need you. Holy Spirit, just move in us. Revival starts here. Listen, there are churches and there are people that know and understand and want this revival in the house. Unfortunately, a big part of your church, of your body, has not even noticed how far away they keep pushing. Right. But Father God, how you use those people that are waiting for you right there to make one of the greatest, most impactful thing in your church, God. 
Father, I, Father, I know you could use us, God. Yes. So I pray for the churches that are that are waiting for that revival, that are waiting for your people that are just that are waiting to say, God, just, just revive your church so we could impact those out there. Father God, there's a wave, there's a flow, there's just a heaviness, God, that is coming. So, Father, even though right now we seem like we're in a waiting place, let us just be patient. And, Father, let us continue to grow. Father, and let us not come in to receive just this word as a teaching, but to truly open our heart and understand that this is more than just teaching. This is spiritual, God. And there is something, just this is just a heavy meat that we need to digest. But, Holy Spirit, we need you. And we need to understand you deeper to truly move in the way you want us to move, God. Thank you for, for honestly using Bishop for this great. God, and forgive me for shutting it for a second, thinking that I was good. I know on this, but Father, thank you for Bishop's word and truly using him to just reveal things that I thought I understood, but I didn't. Thank you for growing me deeper, Lord, in your relationship with you and help your church truly understand Holy Spirit, just help us to truly understand you to that level so revival could be so impactful, so impactful that it will impact all those around us in the name of Jesus. Father God, there's too many of us, Father God, to just be, Lord, there's too many anemic churches, Father God, there needs to be a breakthrough so we could grow with strength, God. And as we grow in revival, we impact other churches to grow in revival, Father, and then it will start impacting those out there. In the name of Jesus, help us, Lord. Holy Spirit, just move. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, as you kept saying, wait, waiting, waiting. I, my mind kept going back to a message from a few years back where God began to speak to us. That the kind of waiting that that translates to is not a positional waiting, but it is a waiting while moving. It is a waiting while moving toward God. In other words, it's not a waiting that does nothing. It does something. And it's waiting on him while moving toward him. And, mm. Yes. Help us, Lord. Help us, waiting while moving. Amen. We do want God's financial favor on the church. And here's, here's the issue that too many people do not understand. The issue is that the Bible says money answereth all things. What does that mean? It means that too many of us don't understand that money is spiritual. It's not paper. It's spiritual. In the Old Testament, cattle meant everything. God said to the children of Israel, he says, when you come out of Egypt, I love this, don't you leave one hoof back in Egypt. You take every animal Everything. I don't care if it's, if it's a donkey. You don't leave one hoof in Egypt. Why? Because that was their revenue. That was their stream. That was their way of God taking. That was their finance. And God says, I don't want you to leave anything for the devil to use. I want you to bring it with you into my land because we're going to use it for his glory. Well, today we don't have cattle. We have money. That is God's thing where God says, don't be leaving it out there for the devil to have a field day with it. Bring it into the kingdom so I can do what I want to do. And so we indeed, we want God's favor and we don't, and we don't want God's people to be constantly struggling. You know, people talk about, I, I, I just want, if I can just make the end, ends meet. Let me tell you something. It is time for the children of God to quit talking about making the ends meet. We can't even find the ends. <laughs> we need to start saying, God, we need you to give us enough rope that we can braid this thing, not just make the ends meet. And so we're going to pray for God's favor on God's church for finances. Pastor Lopez, would you lead us that way?
Father, there's no shortages in the kingdom. There's no economic shortage in the kingdom, God. But your word says that if I bring my tithe and my offering to the house of God, Father, you said that you would rebuke the devourer, Father, from our lives, who would try to destroy, Father, our fruit, that would try to destroy, dear God, what that tie and that offering would bring. Father God, there's a verse that I'm reminded as I'm praying that, that, that the, 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 the wealth of the wicked is going to be given over, dear God, to your children. But Father God, we got to stand in obedience and in line with what you're calling us to do. And so, Father God, my prayer is that, Father, we break the doubt. We break that, 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 that spirit of, of possessing, Father God, what's really not ours. Because, Father God, your word teaches us that we are stewards and managers of things that you put in our hands but we are not owners of anything. We didn't come with anything. And someone said that when the game is over, yes. everything goes back in the box and My we God. take nothing with us. Right. And so, Father God, I am praying the financial blessing is already, Father, on your people. But we have to release it, God. And we release it by doing what you've called us to do. And so, Father, sometimes we magnify the need and the problem, but we don't magnify, dear God, your word and your promise. And I'm still reminded, God, of that widow who opened the windows of heaven, God, because in a time of famine, you said to her, go collect pots, and they were empty. But you said, go collect them, and she obeyed. And the Bible tells me that oil and flour never run dry. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I, Father, I pray for financial, Father God, blessing, yes, over your children. But, Father God, that we don't get it twisted. It's not about the finance. It's about you. And, and, and Father, we've been taught in this church that if God can trust me to get it through me, he'll get it to me. And so, Father God, I pray that over your people. I pray, dear God, that the blinders come off. I pray that the fear comes off. Father, if there is an ill love for money, I pray that that also breaks and comes off, dear God. Because, Father, the Bible says that where the treasure is, there shall my heart be also. So, God, let my heart be in your word, that your treasure. That Father, if I got you, I got everything I need. Father, let us be able to understand that and walk in faith and in obedience to that because you have not failed us yet. My God. Father, you have stripped many things in this season from people's lives. That's right. That's right. But Father God, you have proven that you are our sustenance. You are our provider. And I speak that word over your body. I speak it over the church, God. Father, give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart that understands, dear God, that blessing comes from you. Father, there's financial provision already. You're ready to release it because you said, I'll open the windows and you haven't gone back on your word. So God, I am praying for the hearts of men and women. I'm praying for the hearts of your children that, Father, we do it your way. So that we get the results that you said we would have. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, as we move on, I remember a time in my life when I was struggling. And you, here's, here's the, the nature of all of us. No matter how spiritual we claim to be. When things get tight, there's the temptation to cut back on God first. And, and you know, I battle it. I, I've been through it, I, and I don't stop battling it. There are times where the temptation comes. But let me tell you, you know, what, what really sold it for me is when God spoke to my spirit, and is there is no shortage in the earth because the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. He says the only lack is a lack of obedience in my house. 
And if you're running short, he says, it's because you're not truly trusting me. And, and that cured me. And I said, you know, every time I write the tithe check, I always remind myself, don't mess with that. <laughs> don't mess with that. Because that's what brings the favor of God. If I can be obedient. And you know what? I say it again. You know what I love about God? He's the only one I know who can be late and be right on time. <laughs> I love it. He knows how to do that. Bless his name. Oh, Pastor Stefan, would you pray for our youth and our children's ministry? And uh, I combined it this day because I know that the two of you know the connection that what's happening over here really is going to affect what's happening over here. And you also know that without this man of God being covered, your work becomes even more devastating. And so today I've chosen for you to pray for the children. So when Pastor Mitchell releases them, they're released and it's like just stepping over into another realm of the spirit. Amen. Amen, amen. Father, I, I thank you first and foremost, Lord, that we're in a church where the children's ministry is healthy. Lord, a children's ministry where you can look, God, just even in passing, see the fruit of our children's pastor. God, I thank you, God, that we have a children's pastor, God, who seeks your spirit, God, in a way that's not normal for a children's pastor. God, who holds them to high standards, God, who, who, who challenges, them, challenges them to go God, into other dimensions. And God, I pray, Lord, that even though, God, the children are home and they're not in-house, I pray that you'd be moving, God, in the midst of our children. God, I, I pray that you would speak into uh, Pastor Michelle's spirit. I pray that you would speak into the innermost part of his, his soul. And God, that you would transform him, God, that you would break him. And Lord, that you would impart things and the very things that you do on the inside of him, Lord, that the children would catch the fire. God, I pray, Lord, you would start it in him and God, it would be contagious. Lord, I pray, God, that there would be third graders, fourth graders, fifth graders, God, who would be so in love with your presence, so in love with your glory. Lord, God, that we would see miracles, signs and wonders, God, in children. Lord, that children would begin to do things, God, that people did not expect. Lord, I, I, I'm recalling a story right now of a time where Adiella laid hands on Pastor Mitchell and yes. he was healed. Lord, I pray that that very instance will be normal. God, we're children. God, we're kindergartners. God, we lay hands and they would show their parents how to have faith. God, where they would have a child like faith and Lord, their faith would move heaven. God, have your way in our children. God, I, I pray for our young people. Lord, the other day I was, I was uh, in this virtual conference and I saw that there's a statistic that this is the most activist generation that's ever existed. And God, when you translate that to kingdom route, Lord, this is the generation that's hungry for demonstration. And Lord, as I look on social media, God, I see that there's an attack on this generation, an attack uh, from the enemy from all sides. But Lord, I pray even now, Lord, that you begin to break the yoke of the devil, God, that is on this generation of young people. Lord, I pray that you would raise up a group of young people, God, who will fall in love with you, who would hunger after you, who would thirst after you. I pray, Lord, that you would impart a, a, a hunger after glory and God even if it's a small group of young people Lord who would catch the fire after you Lord that that fire would catch on in the schools it would catch on in their communities it would catch on in, in cities and states and regions Lord I pray that you would call out and raise up a generation of young people Lord who would long after you who would long after your glory and God that you would have your way in them Lord that there will be a demonstration Spirit of God, we pray that you would have your way in our teenagers. God, I pray for that teenager, God, who's struggling with, with insecurity, who's struggling with anxiety, depression, addiction to pornography, Lord, addiction to wanting to please other people. God, that, that, that young person who's struggling with their identity, who doesn't know who they are, and they're looking for themselves at the bottom of a bottle, Lord, with, with, with marijuana, whatever it is, I pray for that young person. I get, God, I pray that your spirit would invade wherever they're at, and Lord, you would take them from their darkness, and you would transfer them to the kingdom 
kingdom of life. Spirit of God, we give you permission to do what only you can do. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Glory. 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 Thank you, Lord. Mm. You know, as, as Pastor Stephon was praying, that's the one thing that I want to say. That Pastor Michelle, what I appreciate is that you speak to them as children, but not like children. You prayed something that was very powerful. You know, one of the things that when Jessica and Shauna were little children, Lady Brenda never talked baby talk to them. Do you know what she said? She said, because if I start this now, then as they get older, I'm going to have to break them from that. She said, so I'm going to talk to them like people. And so we always spoke to them, even though we spoke to them as children, we never spoke to them like children. And that's what I love about what you do. You, you, you speak to them as children, but not like children. Don't ever change that. The, the connection that I sense between what God is doing. Pastor Stefan, my word to you. The Lord told me to tell you, don't be discouraged. Don't look at what you see in the natural right now. The frustration of the hour that you have been in from time to time has been ordained of the Holy Spirit. Because when God begins to pour out his spirit, and he begins to move upon the young people, there will be fruit that will be manifest that you cannot bring in your own might and in your own power. And what you're feeling and sensing now is a holy frustration. It is not natural. It is a holy frustration. And as you hunger and thirst more for his presence, young people are going to be drawn to you. The Lord wants you to know today that you are not the normal for your generation. Oh, God. You are not what this generation is used to. There is a rare anointing of God on you that you must be confident in. And the Lord would have me say to both of you young men, let go of your insecurities. Be bold in me, not arrogant. Humble yet bold in me, says the Lord. For indeed it's not just scripture, but that I have truly called you to the kingdom and to this house for such a time as this. Lean not to your own understanding. And you will find that it is so true that it is not by might, nor by, my, by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. As Pastor Lopez begins to pray about our worship services. Mm. The Holy Spirit said something to me that I said, I know I said it to Pastor Lopez that I need to say to both of you. God has put you on the fast track to ministerial growth. I don't have time, we don't have time to pamper you and you don't have time to be pampered because the assignment on this house and the assignment on you is so big that but that the Holy Spirit invest in you and you receive that investment, we don't have time to speak to you enough for that maturity to take place. See, we have a Dr. Hill, we have a Pastor Lopez, 
we have a Bishop Collins for you to be able to say now, even when they don't speak, I'm going to follow them as they follow Christ. And so I just say to the two of you, stay humble. And the people need to hear this so that they might pray for you. Because God put you on the fast track. And you don't jump off the track. Stay on the track. <laughs> You're on the potter's wheel. Don't jump off the wheel. Pressure. Pressure. Well, I'm going to stop before I start being me and not the Holy Spirit. Pastor Lopez, would you pray in closing for our worship services? And pray for other churches as well as they come together. You know, this is the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, I thank you because you're three, but you're one. And Father, you, you, there's no division in you. That's right. And there's one word, and you speak to the body. And Father, the Bible says that you called some to be pastors. You've called those offices. But you speak to one body, and what one pastor may be saying in one house, Another pastor, dear God, is receiving your word and saying it in another house. Mm -hmm. But it's the same message, dear God. And so, Father God, I lift up our churches. I lift up our services, dear Lord. Father, I pray, dear God, that your people will come with expectation in the name of Jesus. I'm reminded, dear God, that, that you told Moses, take off your shoes. Because the, 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 the ground you're standing on is holy. And so, Father God, I am praying that you charge the environments of our churches, dear God, that when we come into those buildings, that, Father God, we feel your mighty presence, dear God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, would you restore the fear of the Lord? Father, in, in, in your people, dear God, so that when we're coming, we understand, God, we are not the audience, God. But, Father, we come to worship you. Father God, I am praying, dear God, that, that in our worship services, dear God, that our minds are clear and our hearts are open. And that, Father God, the word that is coming forth, dear God, that you would use that word and you would transform us. Father, I'm reminded that revival always starts with a remnant. Yes. There doesn't have to be large people. That's right. But I know that one hot coal will light up the others. Yes. And so, Father yes. God, I'm praying for a fire of your Holy Spirit. I'm asking, dear God, set us ablaze, dear yes. God, even with the remnants that are now in the house. And God, that when we leave the house, we leave, dear God, lit up. And that wherever we go, we bring your fragrance. We bring, dear God, your presence. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, you've been putting a prayer in my spirit. You've been asking me to ask you to clothe me with your spirit. And so, dear God, I am praying, clothe us with your mighty spirit, dear God. Make us sensitive to your spirit. The Bible says that you are the one that renews our mind. Dear God, clothe us with the mighty power of your Holy Spirit, dear God. This is a supernatural thing, and we can't do it, dear God, in our natural. So I'm praying, God, pray. Charge us up. Light us up, dear God. Father God, Pastor Michelle said it in prayer. I draw my faith, dear God, to his prayer, God. This is for spirit, soul, and body. And there is a mighty, powerful teaching coming out of this house. And I thank you for Bishop so much. Father, protect the man of God. I thank you so much for him. Father, because he's teaching. But Father God is going much deeper. Then we understood. It's going much deeper than we know, dear God, because you are doing something. You are preparing your body. Yes, God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I believe, dear God, Thank that you. we're going to see the basic thing, the main thing, become the main thing. Yes, dear yes, God, we're going to see the move of God. We're going yes. to see miracles and signs in the house, dear God, and outside yes. of the house, dear God. So, Father God, light us up. Light us up, dear God. 
And Father, I pray, Father, for those that are in Christ. Father, I said it on Sunday. I just saw like people were tied. Father, I pray that you break the cords yes. and that people, Father, put a hunger and a thirst, a boldness to come to the house of God. Yes, God. Because, God, there's nothing the same in the atmosphere where we come together. The Bible says that where there's unity, you command blessing. That's right. And so, Father God, that there, Father God, bring them, bring them, bring them, dear God. Yes. Father, I'm praying. In the name of Jesus Christ, we love you, God. We yes. praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Bless you, Lord. Sunday, you all are going to realize that every one of you has prayed a portion of the message this Sunday. Every last one of you, there are, and I'm not talking about nuggets. I'm talking about there are things that you literally prayed that the Holy Spirit has confirmed. And I, as we were praying, I looked at David and I said, stay right there. Because I know we wear this song out, but you can't wear out truth. <laughs> the truth is, we need him. We need him. So I know we're a little bit over today, but God has been here and is here. So let's just tell him, tell him. Oh, I need you. Oh, I need you. Now every I need Because you. you're my one. Defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. And oh, I need you. Oh, I need you. Now, every hour, I Cause you're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Now may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his favor.